Continuing in Sony's SRS lineup, they've descended on us with this big boy, the XV900. This is the largest of their gigantic party size Bluetooth speakers and is currently their top of the line model. Need a knife. This one is not exactly purse size though and weighs in at about 60 pounds. Oh. Got styrofoam on top, starting with an optical cable. Woo! This speaker is really neat because it actually has RGB. So it kind of puts the party back into things. I don't know if that's more of a gimmick, but we'll see how bright it is. So we've got this uh, clear plastic thing along the, I guess top and bottom. Yeah, it's got it on the top too. Nice thing is it's got a couple handles right on top here so you can carry it around. There's some wheels along the back so you can troll it around that way. And we'll start getting into all the speakers and it has quite a few. It's got one of the giant 12 inch by 12 inch square woofers down here, a couple of mid drivers out front, and then a couple more tweeters in the top there. The other neat thing is that kind of more of a surround thing. So on each side, it's got another two tweeters and another two on the top. This thing's probably gonna put out some volume, but hopefully the sound quality will match its heft. It comes with a plethora of inputs as well. Something that it's nice it's included is a pair of quarter inch jacks. One of them's for a microphone. So if you wanna do karaoke or something like that, this will be kind of more your, your style. And then it's also got either a second mic input or a guitar input. It's switchable between mic and uh, instrument input. The optical input allows you to hook it up to a TV and kind of use it in TV mode. So it'll sync with whatever's on screen. And if you're playing say karaoke videos or anything like that, you can just kind of have it as an all-in-one unit. It has your standard aux input, so you pass the phone around, stick it uh, somewhere. A nice feature they've included is a little USB output port here, so you can charge your phone when you have it attached. You're not really supposed to leave this plugged in all the time, because this thing is a wireless Bluetooth speaker. Most of it's battery because there are five hours of continuous use. Although in the service manual, they kind of specify that that's at a, at a reasonable volume with all the RGB off. And they get 12 hours at a reasonable volume with the lights on. The minimum will do is four hours at maximum volume with all the lights on. Not too bad. Rather power efficient when it's uh, kind of just in the background. They're also claiming that 10 minutes of charging will give you three hours of runtime. So if it's dying in the middle of your three day bender, a couple licks on the power cord and you're good to go. God, it's heavy. Uh, oh crap, it's battery powered, I forgot. Okay, so we've turned it on. It's got the typical Sony mega bass button, which is on by default, which is fine, I guess. And we've also got transport controls here because it is a Bluetooth speaker, right? It's basically just a gigantic Bluetooth speaker that you're used to. And then we've got these nice colorful things here where we can adjust our RGB. Is it reactive to sound? Now it must be internal. These are gonna be your two tweeters on top as well. They're actually angled back slightly, so it's not gonna shoot at the ceiling. It's gonna fire back. So if you're behind the speaker, you can get some good sound too. Thank you, Roland, for sponsoring this video. Take your gaming sound to the next level with Roland's BridgeCast, the all-in-one solution for live stream audio. With BridgeCast on your desktop, you're backed up by over 50 years of audio innovation. Create a personal mix that prioritizes what critical elements you need to hear while gaming. Then create a separate mix balanced just for chat. Save and recall these settings with the press of a button. Pepper in your personality with the detachable faceplate and Roland's downloadable skin template. To learn more about BridgeCast, check the link in the description below. Let's get back to it. It has Google Fast Pair, so it immediately popped up on my phone to sync, which is super nice. No futzing around with uh, holding the button down and doing all that sort of thing. And we can now see it in Sony's music app. So let's get connected and set it up. Okay, it's pairing now. Tap to pair, pair and connect. Bluetooth connected. Woo. Battery about 80%. Oh, it t I accidentally pushed the battery button. It just tells you. Battery about 80%. Like Sony's other SRS speakers, this one has the ability to group with other speakers. So if you are a crazy person and bought four of these and put them in every corner of the room, it's easier than doing multi-room audio. So yeah, she stands about 35 inches tall, 16 wide and 18 deep. So it's, it's, you know, it's quite hefty. You can see compared to me how big it is. Okay, my phone volume can control it, which is nice. Um, Eight Christ, my heart is going, that's very, very loud. Let's try this again at a reasonable volume and have a listen to those side speakers and the top speaker. Yeah, 
the tweeters are not quite as active as I expected for how much like, you know, high bands coming out of this. I would have liked to see maybe some mid drivers on the side as well, but I, this isn't an omnidirectional speaker, so this is probably gonna go in a corner somewhere and having a little bit of side fill is kind of nice. Now we kind of have it in a place where I would expect it to be, maybe in a house party, something like that. Also, you must really hate your neighbors. Uh, unfortunately, it's mirrored, so it's piano black on top, so it's covered in fingerprints now. Whew. Standing right here, the bass is almost deafening, but as soon as I move away a little bit, um, it sounds a bit better. So you better be careful with walls and floors around this thing because it's gonna change the sound a lot for speakers this big and this bassy. Let's play with some of the sound settings that uh, Sony includes in their app. We got an additional couple controls in here besides the giant mega bass button on the front. We also have a live sound button, which I guess would probably cut down the bass and boost the highs. Let's have a listen. Don't really like that one as much. I was just hoping for more high band, um, but we have some extra sounds in here so we can do a custom. Um, unfortunately, they only give us three controls. Uh, so this is flat at the moment, and I'm just gonna boost the treble until I'm kind of happy with it. So that sound setting seems a little bit more appropriate in this environment at least. The bass is still really thumpy right here, but I'm standing right next to a wall, so I'm definitely in some of the reflections. But out in the room, it's a lot better. And giving a little bit of a cue kind of fixes maybe some of that. It sounds cleaner and a little bit brighter and more of a sound profile that I would want to play at a party. You have speech, you have dancing, you know, all that sort of thing. You don't necessarily need ultra high fidelity audio in that kind of thing. You just quiet background music, but then later in the night, you know, you turn it up and you have a fun time. I wish it beeped when, or vibrated or did something when you pushed a button. Okay, we were talking about DJ effects. Here's the isolator. And here's the flanger. It's like sleep paralysis <laughs> demon music. <laughs> Crump with me, Bart. Now, I think we need to go into illumination and then lighting mode. Oh, we have different lighting modes. This would have been nice to include on the top. This is the delightful color mode. We also have rave, which I guess is maybe a little bit more pronounced. I was hoping they'd be brighter, to be perfectly honest. Maybe there's a control for that. We have chill. Chill is not this speaker. If you bing this to a, we got strobe. That's, that's more like it. And then uh, gradation. Gradi gradation, not graduation, which I read three times in a row. We've got some boring battery power management stuff too. It's got stamina mode, so if you want it to last for a long time. Uh, battery care, of course, when you're charging it to not destroy the battery over a long period of time. And the last thing to look at is the Feistable, Feistable app, um, which is the companion one for lighting control. Um, we have DJ control, which is kind of neat. Select one mode, let's do Party flash, hey, there we go. It's doing this and it's making it blink. We also have a custom color. We can set it to whatever we want. That looks like short circuit blue, sure. Motion control. This is the strangest app I've ever seen. Uh, what, do, what do I wanna do? I wanna play. Oh, there, that worked. And then if I wanna do volume up. Oh wow, that actually did work. This is weird. What do I just hold it? I'm gonna do that here. <laughs> All right. <laughs> yeah, this is uh, this is what it sounds like inside my head at all times. Motion control is weird and very strange. We've got it hooked up to the TV now with optical. It was really nice of them to include one because like who has one of those anymore? But you know, works instantly. What are expectations? When we define them, are we breaking the mold? What if they expected me to do that? Who are they? Okay, yeah, there's too much bass, and I can't really hear Linus talking about whatever he's talking about. But there is a button on top and also in the app called the TV Sound Booster. So let's push that and see what that does to the voice and the rest of it. Mega bass is off at the moment. It's still really bassy sitting down here. Oh, that is so much worse. What the hell happened? 
They're doing nothing. Oh, I get it. I know. Uh, yeah, okay. That's actually kind of cool. You know what it's for? Yeah. It's supposed to support your existing speakers. So it gives a little bit of tiny little sibilance and then a lot of sub bass. So it's kind of acting like a subwoofer and maybe a center channel simultaneously. Yeah, that was so confusing. Oh my God. TV sound booster makes everything sound like <laughs> Sure. It doesn't need ludicrous speed or whatever. I don't think I've ever seen a speaker come as something for support. I think all Bluetooth speakers should do that. That's really neat, actually. I think I like it a little more, although thinking about it, for its use case as a party speaker, why would you use it to support your speakers in your home when it's giant and you're going to use it as a party? Like, I don't see this fitting into a living room very well. That doesn't, now, it doesn't make sense anymore. I mean, it's a cool feature to include, and obviously they've added the optical in. They've spent the time to design a circuit for it, because I can hear a little relay in there click when I push the button, but I don't know. You draw your own conclusions. It's confusing to me. I guess, uh, who is this for, right? If your particular proclivity is playing Wonderwall to your friends badly because they can't leave your house, then maybe this is for you. You know, it's got the guitar in, it's got the vocal mic in. Maybe this, maybe you want that. Um, I could also see it possibly be good for weddings, you know, throw it in a tent outside, last for 24 hours, all that sort of thing. One of the problems is it's 900 US dollars, which is a hefty price to pay, but I do think you get a lot of speaker for that. Um, similar floor monitors that you would need extra stuff for and are also not portable or battery powered. Uh, there's like the Mackie SRM450, which for about 500 bucks will give you a thousand watts of output power. And that's also deafening, but this is damn loud. And I think the sound quality is acceptable. This is kind of one you have to make your own conclusions for. It's very, very not for everybody, but unfortunately it's kind of okay at being not for everybody. Uh, don't forget to like and subscribe to Short Circuit. Did you hear it from upstairs? That was, that was full volume. I was standing next to it, yeah. <laughs>